Hello Uni High students. Uh, I thought I would take you on a tour of my garden to give you some ideas and suggestions of what you can do over the holidays if you get bored of staying inside and doing this. Come on! Or watching this. There's something happening to me. There's something awakening in my mind. I can't control it. And prefer to get out into the garden and grow some things. So anyway, sit back, relax and enjoy. Welcome Uni High students to my garden. Uh, Mr. Bickham's garden. So I'm going to take you on a tour around it and as we go along the tour I hope to give you some hints and tips about what you could if you're thinking of doing something outside during the holidays uh, things that you could plant in your own garden uh, which would grow quite quickly and which would be delicious. So anyway to feed both yourself and your family. So let's get into it. We'll start with this end of the garden and you can see here here is my patch of garlic and that's been in since about November and I'll probably harvest that around April. I'll know when to actually harvest it when these leaves here start browning off a bit and then the bulbs down the bottom will be very big. I can pull them out and I can dry them out then and to keep them over uh, the summer and use them into the future. Uh, this bush here is a guava bush and you can see there's a lot of new growth on it but at the moment there are no flowers it does fruit and it has delicious fruit so I'm waiting for that to happen too as we go back this big tree here is a plum tree and beside it is another plum tree and that is my satsuma plum tree that one there and if we go in close you can see some of the flowers there moving back and if we're lucky I'll go up to here we might be able to see if you look very closely um, in some of these parts there are actual uh, little plums growing where the flowers have been pollinated so this satsuma plum it's been in for about seven years and from about the second year onwards it was producing lots of fruit so it's been really good going back down to the garden and beside my garlic there this leafy vegetable here is charred I feed it mostly to Fernando my guinea pig but I'll have some as well mmm delicious then beside my chard is my patch of celery and that's very strong celery I won't eat that but it's great you go down you can see have a look in there like normal celery you get from the supermarket and you could use on that in you can use that in soups or whatever so that that's been in for a couple of months but you could put that in now in your own garden and it would certainly it's very hardy um, pests don't get to it any pests or bugs so um, that's a great choice to put into your garden beside the celery is some more chard and then beside the chard looking at those there they are tomato plants that I've put in I bought them as seedlings from a nursery and they're growing really well, particularly that back one there you can see. Down in the oh actually, down here, see this little that little seedling there, that is a sunflower. Well it will be. I put it in as a seed and it's grown, so that's great. Beside uh, the tomatoes are uh, my strawberries and I've got three strawberry plants and you can see they are all flowering which is great you can even see the mini strawberries in the center of those flowers um, this strawberry plant here the one on the right of the three that is about 10 years old it's super hardy I've ripped it up and put it in different parts of the garden and it still survives so if you're thinking about um, putting in a, a, a fruit bush that's really hardy then I would go for these strawberries. These other two are pretty good too, so they're great. Next, let's have a look. These, and look up there, going back a bit, they're my sugar snaps, and you're probably wondering why have I got a net over all of 
uh, these, uh, this stuff here, it's because a possum came along and ate some of it so I had to actually net it all to keep the possums out um, and to keep the birds out. So the, uh, but these sugar snap peas, they're delicious. They grow really easy so you can plant them now um, and I'll hopefully show you later um, some of the uh, other sugar snaps I have in my garden. They grow really quick and they're delicious. And I'll just look at me, hello, and I'll eat this one. Mmm, super sweet. All right, moving on. These, uh, these plants here are kale, and kale um, grows really well. It's growing well at the moment, um, hardy, but there is, there's a white butterfly called a cabbage butterfly, and the cabbage butterfly does like to lay its eggs on kale during spring and summer. Winter it's fine, it's too cold for them, but during those times of year and autumn, and you'll have caterpillars all over that, but um, when it's cold, it's too cold and they won't. So that's why these leaves are going really well. You can see some of these are actually starting to seed as well and flower, so I'll get the seeds from those and grow them for next year. Down here is, I'll go right in. They are my tomato seeds, or seedlings, which I grew from seeds themselves. So I actually f um, germinated them inside because it was too cold outside to germinate them. And uh, then once they'd grown a little bit smaller than that, I'll put them into the garden there. It's another reason why I have this netting to keep the birds out because the birds have gone into that garden bed and ripped it up a bit. So I protect those seedlings until they're grown strong enough then beside some more car, that actually down here is my silver beet. Having a look, it's pretty good. And that grows really well too, so I'd put some of that in if you've got the room. And then some more kale, and then here, and these are great, a great choice for a garden, and you can put them in now. I've had these in since April though, um, I put them in early. Um, and these are broad beans, so you can see the broad beans there, and I might, I might pull one off, let's have a look. This one looks pretty good. And let's see, let's see. There's a few around. Get them off. There. Open it up. And you'll see there's a broad bean, and you can literally just take it out and plant that straight in the garden, or you can eat it. Mmm, yum. So there's some more down here. Try to just with one hand, it's not the easiest. There we go. There, here's my broad bean. I turn the camera around, I look at me. Mmm, delicious, really nice. Okay, let's keep going. So they're my broad beans. And then my big lemon tree. And you can see it's that time of the year. Flowers are coming up, new growth. Got some lemons on there, obviously. So that's going really well. Down here is where I'm going to have uh, uh, my zucchinis. I might put some more tomatoes in. That bush there is another guava bush, um, which I'm waiting to, uh, for it to actually flower and put some fruit on, but it will. Um, but this, yeah, this uh, trellis here, I go back. I put this here for the zucchinis. I might even put some um, uh, cucumbers as well and see how they go up that trellis, but we'll wait and see. This is my blood orange and Mr. Beekman and the humanities faculty gave me that blood orange tree several years ago and that produces really good blood oranges as well. You can see uh, that, not at the, at the moment though, they've, I've taken them all the old ones off but uh, some flowers coming and that'll produce maybe, oh, what I reckon, 15, 20 blood oranges this year which would be great. Down here is my fennel bush which I use for Fernando, my guinea pig. And down here, if you look really closely, that, I think, is a sunflower, another sunflower which I put in.
Oh, and by the way, if we look really close in here and have a close look, I'll move some of this stuff out of the way, the fennel and so forth, you can see asparagus. There are asparagus spears and they grow really well too. They're quite hardy. You need to compost them and things, but I, they're um, just as nice as the ones that you can get in the store at the supermarket. Over here, I have some more tomato plants. Some more, and once again, I've had to net them um, in order to protect them from the birds, but they'll be right. Usually in the past, you would grow, put tomato plants. The rule used to be you would put tomato plants in after uh, Melbourne Cup or around Melbourne Cup Day to avoid the frosts, but now it, the way the climate's changed, it doesn't really matter. You can put them in earlier. That's what I do. All right, moving along. Now this beautiful tree here, this is my persimmon tree and it will flower. The flowers are actually starting to form a little bit. If we look over here, you can see those little buds on the end near the leaves. Um, there's probably a good one up there too. So they're the, the early flowers and then those flowers will get pollinated by bees and turn into persimmons. Some people uh, don't like persimmons because they fine they're too sweet I love them you have to wait until they're really ripe before you can eat them but they are delicious next up is my fig tree and I've espaliated it so I've sort of uh, espaliated it along it along the fence um, cut branches off and so forth and sort of stuck it to wires so it looks really good hopefully one day <laughs> and then going down here are my sweet pepper plants. Now the leaves don't look all that healthy at the moment but they will get uh, better. They actually die die off a little bit over the winter and then they start growing in spring and summer and I'll have lots of peppers on them. Uh, and I'm not sure if I've got any on there. I don't think I do. Now let's have a look. Oh hold on. What have we got here? That's not really a good one. No there's pretty much Oh, there's a sort of like small one here. But when they're growing properly, they're a lot bigger than that. Anyway, so they're pretty good too. And then, what else have we got? Let's keep going. There, 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 there. Ah, next. This is my avocado tree. And at the moment, I've had two avocados on it so far. But that, uh, you can see all the new growth on that. And they're great. You have to you have to buy varieties that are uh, will um, will fruit down here. Not all avocados will actually bear fruit um, in Victoria. Some will only work up in Queensland. So you just have to be careful before you uh, choose your avocado tree. And then going further south, let's have a look down here, and you can see under there too. This is all what I call Chetty Coriander. So it's coriander that Miss Chetty, the seeds, Miss Chetty gave me the seeds um, last year or the year before. And she also told me how to um, prepare the seeds because you can't just put the seeds in the ground. You have to actually, they're very hard, coriander seeds. And the best, the best way to make them work is to um, use a rolling pin and break the seed casings open. And then the actual seeds themselves are inside those thick seed casings and once you do that then you can put those all the seeds straight into the ground and they grow very quickly as you can see so these are probably whew, th oh, three weeks old I'd say um, yeah so it goes pretty quick and then over here look very carefully these are beans and I put these beans in um, well literally these they're super fast growing beans and these shoots here have only been up for two days. So they only came out two days ago. And look how fast they've already grown. Okay, so they are, they're gonna go great guns. And I'm hoping they'll grow up this trellis here next to my wisteria. And the wisteria is actually flowering a little bit for the first time, which is beautiful. Behind the wisteria is an apricot tree. And pretty much that is my tour of my garden. I hope you enjoyed it and um, have a great holiday. 
and get out and make your own veggie garden. Okay, see you all term four. Bye.